It's good to be mean to war propagandists. Sydney Morning Herald editor Bevan Shields has published an article titled We are not above criticism, but these attacks go too far. Tearfully rending his garments over criticisms, his paper's three-part War with China propaganda series Red Alert has received from former Prime Minister Paul Keating and from ABC's Media Watch. The whole article is Shields moaning about the way Keating raked Australian war propagandists at the National Press Club of Australia on Wednesday. Keating told Red Alert co-author Matthew Knott, you should hang your head in shame and do the right thing and drum yourself out of Australian journalism, as well as mocking the intelligence of Sky News reporter Olivia Casely for seriously suggesting that China is a military threat to Australia, and calling Sydney Morning Herald editor Peter Harcher a psychopath and maniac. For years we have laughed along with Keating as he hurls his trademark barbs, but it's not funny anymore, weeps Shields. (laughs) And you know what? Good. It's good that these disgusting war propagandists are crying. They deserve a lot worse than a public tongue lashing from a former Prime Minister. To be clear, when I say people Keating ripped into at the National Press Club are propagandists, it's not just how I see them. That's actually how they see themselves. Mm, Yeah, they may not use that label, but they plainly see themselves as responsible for promoting Pentagon-friendly narratives, as evidenced by their behaviour at that very press conference. If you watch them line up to question Keating and listen to what they're saying, over and over again you hear them trying to insert narratives, like a propagandist, rather than asking probing questions like an actual journalist. You hear ABC's Andrew Proben work to insert the narrative that China is a threat to Australia by citing things like sanctions on select Australian products in retaliation for Canberra's playing along with Washington's attack on Beijing over COVID, regurgitating the discredited claim of Chinese debt diplomacy and babbling about China's militarisation as though the US wasn't encircling China militarily and engaging in increasingly aggressive acts of brinkmanship. You hear the aforementioned Olivia Casely work to insert the narrative that China is a military threat to Australia. You hear Bloomberg's Ben Westcott work to insert the narrative that Australia should work with the US to protect its trade from China, hilariously accidentally reenacting the famous utopia sketch by ignoring the fact that China is Australia's primary trading partner. You hear the Australian's Jess Malcolm work to insert the narrative that China built up its own military in its own country and that that is somehow a provocation against Australia, which Keating immediately smacks down with appropriate disdain. And you hear the aforementioned Matthew Knott work to insert the narrative that Keating is a treasonous Xi Jinping puppet by sleazily insinuating that the former Prime Minister must say critical things about the Chinese Communist party in order to prove his fealty. Over and over and over again they line up to act like loyal defenders of the US empire and over and over and over again Keating treats them like what they are. Propagandists. Power worshipping bootlickers for the most powerful empire that has ever existed. Watching Keating tear strips off all those war pornographers was so satisfying because it showed Australians the appropriate emotional posture to have towards these disgusting freaks. That's the bare minimum level of contempt that they always should be treated with. Australians who don't want war with China are still unclear about how to respond to this deluge of mass media war propaganda our country is being smashed with. But Keating showed us exactly how to respond. He provided a solid model for us all. If anything, Keating was too kind to these ghouls. One really can't have enough disdain for those who peddle war propaganda professionally and pass it off as journalism to an unsuspecting public. They're right up there with all the worst human beings who have ever lived and they should be treated as such. Bevan Shields melodramatically refers to the public excoriation of his colleagues as Donald Trump-like abuse of journalists doing their jobs. But they're not journalists doing their jobs. They are propagandists. If you want to call yourself a journalist, you need to act like it. Be sceptical. Question your sources. Question their funding. And get the story right. That's the job. In this case, the lives of nearly 26 million people are relying on you to get it right. 
It's a huge responsibility and you are failing us. You deserve so much worse than having mean things said to you by a retired politician. These Pentagon puppets deserve more than just shame. I cannot believe they can so blithely push our country into the front line of someone else's war. How very generous of them to offer up our sons and daughters in the name of the almighty US of A. It should enrage all Australians that a war of unimaginable horror is being shoved down our throats by the US Empire. And it should enrage us that people who call themselves journalists are using the trust of the public to help manufacture consent for it. We need to start saying no to this. We need to whip up enough fire in our bellies and make sure that no comes out with enough force to generate fear in these bastards. Australians are not good at rage, but rage is what these actions should elicit and our own actions need to start flowing from there. We can't just let them inflict this horror upon our world with the signature Australian, ah, well, whatever you reckon's of anything, mate. The war propagandists cry about abuse when being put in their place by a 79-year-old XPM while inflicting the most abusive thing imaginable upon our civilization. This cannot stand. We've got to get moving, people. These pricks are going to get us killed if we don't.